Hello and welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today with Mark Slater, award-winning fund manager, chief investment officer, and co-founder of Slater Investments. In particular, we're here to talk about the Slater Growth Fund, which I've been using now in client portfolios for almost five years. Over that time frame, the fund has performed admirably, delivering a return of 68.6% against a benchmark return of 29.2%, so more than double, which is fantastic. There's a lot of things we like about the fund, Firstly, it's long-term track record and Mark's long-term track record, but we also like the fund's competitive charging structure. We like the way the fund is set up and also the way the company is set up. We like the fact that Mark invests a lot of his own money in the fund. This ensures that our client's interests and Mark's interests are aligned. It also ensures that Mark is under no short-term pressure to make short-term investment decisions at the expense of long-term investment decisions. Last but not least, we really like the strategy that Mark uses to pick individual companies for the fund. Mark, can you explain to us your stock picking process for the fund and how this has led to your outperformance over the past five years? Our focus is on businesses that we believe can grow sustainably, um, that we can buy at a reasonable price. So what we do is we screen the whole universe of companies in the UK um, uh, that, that, that are listed in the UK. They might be operating outside the UK, but that, that are listed here. Um, irrespective of size, and we screen for businesses which we which are forecast to grow their earnings at an above average rate. Um, we f then we also screen for the price of that earnings growth, and the primary measure of price we use is the PEG, which compares the PE with the growth rate. And the third thing we screen for is cash flow, and that comes in two forms. It, we look at the degree to which profit is converted into cash, and the level of free cash flow that a business generates. Now those screens get the universe of however many, 3,000 companies or whatever it is, down to about 150, 160 companies. So you knock out 95% very, very quickly. Now from there, we then analyze our shortlist in much more detail. And typically what happens is, we, the, the wide end of the funnel, if you like, um, we're acting sort of quantitatively, but once we have our shortlist, our focus is entirely qualitative. And from there, we're focusing on the quality of the businesses, you know, the, the degree to which we're confident they can grow going forward, the degree to which they have a tailwind. Um, now, some of these things are quantitative in it to a degree. You, know, you can look at things like return on capital, you can look at margins, but in most cases, it's a much more qualitative assessment of the dynamics of a business and the degree to which we're confident that earnings can be delivered on a multi-year view. Mark, how do you filter down that process and use those ideas to construct the portfolio? The portfolio of construction for us um, is primarily guided by conviction. Um, we don't want to have huge numbers of holdings, uh, so we typically have somewhere between 35 and 50 holdings. Um, at the moment, we're in the low 40s, um, and uh, we, we, so we're, we, what we want is for our, our conviction to be reflected in the way that the portfolio is uh, put together. What mitigates against that sometimes is liquidity. We want um, the liquidity of the portfolio to be at an acceptable level. Um, so typically, a small business, we would start with maybe a 1% unit, um, a slightly more liquid small cap or a small uh, mid-250 company, we might start at a 2% weighting. And for a slightly larger company, we might start at 3%. And then over time, if our conviction grows, we might grow those position sizes as well. Um, but we, we, we're fairly incremental on the way in. Um, what we do um, quite aggressively is that we run our profits, particularly for the companies where we have the highest conviction. And equally, we look to cut our losses when we're wrong and then we can redeploy the money back into companies where, where we have higher conviction. And finally, could you tell us about how the portfolio is constructed now and how you see things panning out over the next five years? Markets right now are, are relatively challenging. You know, except, uh, in October and, and early November, markets have come down quite a bit. Um, and as a result of that, there are quite a lot of companies out there now that are down 20, even 30 percent, that have done nothing wrong at all. You know, they, they, they haven't reported bad news or anything like that. So there have been some very, very big falls underneath the kind of index level. The indices are down 8, 9 percent, that kind of thing. But the 
um, underneath that, there's some very, very big movements. So there's quite a lot of opportunity now. Um, but there are also headwinds economically. Um, so our focus, as always, is on sustainable growth. We want businesses that can deliver the goods on a multi-year view. Um, we also want, we want to marry that with, with a sensible price. Um, and it's more feasible now than it was even a month ago. You know, there is more opportunity. So we've been nibbling, nibbling away in the last um, few weeks, um, primarily on existing holdings, which have come down. Um, and we've got plenty of cash, which we can use to, 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 to buy new holdings as well. So you know, I think it's quite a good time to have a bit of money, you know, a, bit of, a bit of dry powder. Um, in terms of what we're actually doing portfolio-wise, we're doing what we've always done. You know, the, the businesses we focus on are typically quite niche businesses, and we like businesses that can make their own weather, that you know, have a degree of control over their, 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 their activities and, and, and their fortunes. Um, and that's still our focus. Um, and I think the, the key is when markets are tough is not to worry unduly about day-to-day -day fluctuations. You know, that, that gives opportunity. The key is that the businesses we're focused on, the businesses we own, are delivering the goods. That's overwhelmingly the most important thing. Um, so that's what we're really focused on day to day. Um, and I think if we do that right, you know, this year so far has been difficult, um, but it's normal sometimes you get difficult times. Um, and our view is the difficult period sets you up for a good period afterwards. You know, the, the, the global financial crisis in 08, 09 created enormous value, which we've been harvesting for a very long time. And you know, we haven't seen falls like that recently, but, but there's already a lot more value than there was a little while ago. So there's no real change to our process. Um, we're nibbling away. We're wary because it pay, pays to be wary, but we're also conscious of the fact we should be taking advantage of opportunities when we find them. So no particular concerns about the implications of Brexit? We've looked carefully at the portfolio in relation to what the kind of impacts the, the, what, what kind of impact we might see. Um, in the last couple of years, we've reduced quite a lot our exposure to companies which have consumer um, risk. Um, but we, we also don't have um, any meaningful exposure to companies with complex supply chains. Um, we're not heavily involved with businesses that export from the UK. Um, in most businesses nowadays have local manufacturing or local offices through which they can conduct business um, outside the UK. So, you know, I think if there were a, if we got into a hugely unpredictable scenario, there'll be a, there would be market impact. Um, but I think it would be relatively short-lived, and, and and I don't think we're especially exposed to that. Um, but there, there's clearly some exposure. Um, but we're not overly worried about it because we t we take a long-term view and. I think these things, you know, I, we don't expect a sort of major obstacle, there may be a speed bump, but I, no more than that. Um, we tend to focus, we tend to worry more about things we don't know about. You know, Brexit is very well advertised, businesses have had a long time to get ready, um, and quite a lot of the risk is also currently reflected in the price. A lot of shares have come down quite a lot. So um, our concern really is on things that people don't talk about so much. Um, that's what we're we're trying to look around the corner, <laughs> if you like. Um, but uh, no, but uh, we're always concerned about all the things. Yeah, we we look at we, our job is to be concerned. Um, but we're in businesses that are you know well managed um, and have you know pretty good moats to to protect them from from these sorts of things. So on a long term view, we're not worried about it. Thank you very much, Mark. It's been fantastic to get your insights on the fund. Great pleasure.